Good morning. Where is a prophet most without honor? So we're going to look today at Mark 6, 1 to 6. Let me read it. Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many, hearing him, were astonished, saying, But where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are, are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do no mighty works there except that he had laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit, teaching. So when Jesus returned to the synagogue at Nazareth, uh, he spoke there. And what happened? The people all thought, well, we know this guy. We, we, he was in our Sabbath school class before. He was, in, he was in our church. We know who this is. We know who his relatives are, his sisters are. We know all about that family. This was the carpenter from Nazareth. Who does he think he is? And why is he, how is he able to do these, uh, these things that supposedly he's doing? And they just sort of discounted everything that Jesus had to say. And so Jesus rebuked and said, you know, well, where is a prophet without, most without honor, in his own country and in his own family? And it's true. So Jesus couldn't do any mighty works there. He just, he did heal some people, but he wasn't able to do the kinds of things that he, he really desired to do to help those people. And the question sort of comes up, you know, for you and me, well, how is it in our church? See, what it was in Nazareth, there was a spiritual lethargy. There was kind of a self-satisfaction. The people were quite satisfied with business as usual. They were satisfied to conform to the way things had always been kind of in the, in the village there in Nazareth. Jesus couldn't do much for them with that kind of an attitude. How is it in our congregations? I know you say, well, look, I'm just one person. But you say, well, things are kind of sleepy in my own congregation. Well, maybe they are. But you know what? Maybe you can just find one or two people and pray with them. Begin to pray and ask for God to show you what to do and, and see something mighty happen. It just takes a few. It just takes a very few hearts that are open to Jesus, and then anything can happen. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, help us not to be like the, the example of the people that lived in Nazareth. Uh, they, they thought they understood. They thought they knew who Jesus was. They thought that he was just a nobody. But Lord, he was, he was God, God come in human flesh. Lord, help us to be sensible to the spiritual opportunities you give us, and maybe even our own, in our own congregations. Uh, you have a work for us to, that you want to begin, and if we can just come together with some people. Lord, show us what to do so that the kingdom of God can expand into the earth right where we live. Why not, Lord? Why not? We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there you have it, a suggestion, and that would be my, uh, my call to action to you, so to speak, today. This, this Sabbath, this weekend at church, find somebody that you can pray with, somebody who's spiritual, and maybe talk to them about this. Maybe, maybe there's something that can begin, and why not begin this very weekend? Something to think about, something to pray about. You have a blessed day in the Lord Christ Jesus.